Get that. Can I hang on to that? And we're off. Okay, flush, flush. <laughs> flush. We arrived by ferry to a coastal city on East Java and picked out a quick $5 room for the night near the train station. Our plan was to head further west, so we bought a train ticket for the early morning departure and continued on. If we have this whole train car to ourselves, I'm going to be amped. The train system in Indonesia is pretty simple, and an economy ticket will buy you a pretty cramped spot facing other passengers. After about four hours, we reached our destination in the small, quiet town of Probolinggo. Stasiun Probolinggo. This is a good place to stop, as it is one of the two towns that can access Bromo Tengger Semeru National Park. The entire town is small enough to explore on foot, and we managed to find some eateries, but overall, food options are a little limited out here. Kentucky Fried Chicken. There was a pretty solid Japanese restaurant near hotel, though, that we did enjoy. When we arrived, we loaded up our $1 pedal taxi to take us to our hotel. We chose Ilomba Guest House to stay a couple nights in preparation for Bromo National Park. The setup was simple with a comfy bed and hot shower, but the golden ticket was access to both hot and cold drinking water. It might sound minor, but this is Indonesia after all, and clean drinking water is essential. Always be mindful of the call to prayer every few hours as it is a Muslim region. Just after midnight, we set off on a jeep tour to watch the sun rise over the volcanic fields of Bromo Tengger Semeru National Park. It's a small adventure in itself, as you must navigate the darkness and also be thoroughly equipped to protect yourself against the cold. How are you doing? I'm cold. Eventually, the sun begins to break through the clouds. Look, it's opening up. It's a surreal experience to witness firsthand as the clouds move fast and settle into the valley below. The calderas of all the volcanoes come into focus, with Sumeru towering in the distance and usually spewing ash into the sky. After the sunrise, we hopped back into our trusty Tweety Bird Jeep and eventually made our way down to the Sea of Sand, where most of the Jeeps gather or regroup for extended hikes. It's a pretty solid location to take some group photographs and walk amongst the giant calderas in an endless sand pit. There is an opportunity to sum it up to the rim of the Bromo Volcano here as well. You can choose to hire a horse to take you up, but I don't know how I feel about it. They're really small ponies like the ones we saw in the Gili Islands, and honestly, it's a fairly easy hike up anyway. The final stretch is an old, long staircase that sits on the side of the caldera. It's about 100 stairs to go, and the final view at the top is nothing short of eye-opening. A beautiful, but also slightly perilous trek around the rim. We made our way to the bustling city of Surabaya. This is the capital city of East Java, which blends modern luxury shopping with the old, narrow segments of the old city. We stayed at the Hilton Doubletree. Oh shit, we got the top! Which was a fairly new hotel right in the middle of the city. The breakfast was massive which consisted of endless Asian, Western, and European spreads. So much so that we basically decided to take full advantage and just live the resort life in this hotel, eating endless snacks and using the facilities to the max. After a few days, we took another grab taxi south. We recommend staying at the corner homestay out here, where we had complimentary breakfast and we're given a lift to the nearby Tumpak Sewu waterfall. It starts out like any other waterfall hike, 
but as you get closer to the panoramic overlook, it becomes abundantly clear why it's one of the most scenic waterfalls in all of Indonesia. The name loosely translates to Thousand Waterfalls, where a confluence of rivers meet around a semicircular drop-off. It stands at roughly 120 meters, and the best time to visit is in the early morning hours, where the clouds hang in the balance and the water is at its cleanest. The streams run all the way from Mount Samero, which hangs out in the distance, towering over the vast landscape. To fully experience this waterfall is to undertake a pretty physically demanding hike down to the base. If the rickety platforms don't phase you, the slick steps down a small waterfall might. Once down on the bottom, there are signs to point you in the right direction. Hey, good morning, brother. And even a makeshift coffee station to replenish some energy. It will take a few more assisted shallow river crossings to pass, and you will eventually come to the clearing at the base of the waterfall. There is no denying that this is probably the most scenic waterfall I've been to next to Niagara Falls. Can't really swim here, but the cool mist from the rushing water is enough to enjoy. After we were done here, we headed back the way we trekked in. Only this time, we took a detour to another area called the Goa Tets. This is essentially an extension of the waterfall causeway where the topography changes as you ascend. We were prepared to get completely drenched here and, well, it definitely delivered. The trail winds and weaves as it climbs through the smaller streams feeding out of a larger body of water. It's a great opportunity to see some native birds, tree monkeys, and make connections with the friendly locals. No way. At the top of the trek, there are some substantially large inlets that seem to stretch on for a while, and this whole area begins to feel like an elaborate network of water tubes and slides. It was a memorable experience getting to explore the entirety of this hidden gem deep in the heart of East Java, Indonesia. We also got to try a very interesting native fruit called the snake fruit. It has an outer shell that resembles the scales of a snake and they're fairly sweet once you crack them open. Our final waterfall was Kabut Pelangi which we were basically shown by our homestay host. I just wish I didn't wear sandals. After several stream crossings, this waterfall is about as big and powerful as we've seen throughout our travels. It's about 135 meters tall, nestled among the dense canyon walls. It was the perfect waterfall to cap our wet trekking through the lush rainforests of East Java. And we even have some trophy sized leech bites on our feet to prove it. Finally, before leaving, we wanted a better look at Mount Samero, one of Indonesia's most active volcanoes. We drove through a super rural area and into a remote area where the mountain can be clearly seen sitting amongst fertile forests rushing creeks, and village rice terraces. It was a good opportunity to see it at a relatively safe distance before setting off to Lumajang for our train ride back. <coughs> As we were en route to Lumajang, we were told about the eruption that happened in December of 2021 and that the only road out was completely wiped out. 
eruption road. This is the eruption? Yes. No way. Eruption from to one time. There is a local effort going on to make a detour around the affected area. This is solely based out of donations from vehicles traveling through the area and a large-scale cleanup has since been started as well. Sadly, around 57 people have died from this recent eruption with 22 still missing and thousands displaced. Homes, businesses, and schools were unfortunately destroyed and buried under toxic ash and heavy mud. A sobering reminder of a volcano's lethal power. We eventually reach the city of Lumajang after driving close to five hours. We boarded the last train of the night to take us back to the eastern shoreboard of East Java and eventually on the ferry back to Bali. So this sums up our travels through the country of Indonesia. We are impressed with its rich culture, diverse landscapes, and incredible people. If you like this video and are interested in more of Indonesia, I've included some links as well. As always, give a quick thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.